Good day, everybody. Welcome to the orientation lecture for the module BLT 2120, Hematology and Blood Transfusion Science. Today, we're going to learn what the blended learning approach is all about and how it will be conducted during this lecture or during this module. Our facilitators on this module will be I, Penin and Samba, together with Mr. Eric Babuza. We will be supported by two lab technologists, Mr. William Kabasa, the chief lab technician, and Mr. Kiplanga Trodas, a technician. So let's look at traditional learning. This is the teacher. These are the students sitting in all facing in one direction, the teacher, whom you can see is speaking. And usually we have some students who are out in the marketplace. They're not in the lecture, um, doing their own thing somehow. So we shall represent them by those standing, looking inside the window. So in the traditional learning approach, the teacher is responsible for your learning. They tell you what to do, when to come, and what topics are going to be taught. And what is the reaction that we get? Yes, the teacher is the only one talking. The teacher knows everything. There's no discussion. And after the lecture, we usually give an assignment or a test. Now from the student side, the first student, you can see well. He's just dumbfounded. He doesn't know what is happening. This one is asleep. The sad student really is saying, I mean, I don't understand anything. And the first student is, okay, he's given up. He's just resigned to getting an F. So, boring, repetitive, predictable. One student is isolated. You cannot cope up with anything. Another, the last student has, you know, given up. So, we're going to stop this method of teaching, where the teacher is in control of everything. We are going to flip everything the other side around. We are going to shift roles from the teacher to the students. And some of the roles are going to come from the students to the teachers. It's going to be a flipped classroom. So the four concepts that are predominant in the flipped classroom one of them is going to be choice. You choose to gain wisdom. That's why you've enrolled for this module. That's why you've enrolled for this semester. The choice is yours to gain wisdom, to gain empowerment, to gain mastery in hematology and blood transfusion science. Nobody's going to push you towards that. The choice is entirely yours. Secondly, <coughs> you are going to own your own learning. You're going to take charge of your own learning. You are going to own the curriculum. You're going to look for the curriculum and own it. Track your learning. You know that this week I've covered topics A and B. Next week I've covered, covered topics 3 and 4. By the 10th week I've covered topics up to 14. So you're going to track your own learning. And you're going to track this using learning maps. And you're even going to assess yourself before we get round to assessing you. <coughs> Sorry. So the lecturers and technologists will give you the context, the connection and the conditions <coughs> where you'll be able to track the curriculum, track your learning using maps and even do your own self assessment so we're going to have active teachers and after your learning you're going to reflect on your own how am i doing how do i know what are the gaps let's remember that you are tracking your learning so you'll be able to know how you're doing how far you've gone what is remaining you're going to have your own self-assessment so you'll be able to know how much you know, how you know, 
and you'll be able to identify the gaps in your learning. With the self-assessment, you'll be able to know what gaps you have. So you're going to ask yourself, what are the next steps? How do I move to close the gaps? After the reflection, you're going to contribute, share, collaborate, and acquire values. And by this, you'll be closing the gaps that you didn't know. With your friends and your peers and your lecturers contributing towards your learning. So let's look at these three, four concepts in detail. Choice, learning, reflection, and contributing. You're going to be active. You're not going to be laid back. So these are the four concepts. You learn, you choose, you learn, reflect, and contribute. Let's look at the first concept, choose. You choose to come to class by yourself. You choose to join Muwele. You choose to join a discussion group. You choose to join the WhatsApp class WhatsApp group. You choose to attend practicals or demonstrations. You choose to follow up the learning concepts. You choose to do the hospital attachments. The choice is yours. Nobody's going to push you or force you. So you're in charge of your own learning. After you've made the choice, I think that's why you're here listening to this video. Yes, you move to learning. If you don't know the road, any road will get you anywhere. So, where do you begin from? You need to know the road. You need to know the roadmap. And we've given you these roadmaps. So, with your learning, there's a roadmap, guided roadmap. And this is the context given by the lecturers. This is a timetable that tells you when the topic of BLT 2120 hematology and blood transfusion is being taught and where it's being taught. There is a course overview. There is a study guide. You've already downloaded this from Mwele by this time. In the course overview, you've seen the aims of the module. You've seen the objectives of the module. You've seen the list of topics that need to be covered. This is also there in the study guide. So you've already got to the first step in the map, in your learning map. You know by the end of the 14 weeks of the campus, you'll have covered all of those topics up to number 14. So what are you going to do with all of these topics? How are you going to navigate your way around the topics that have been listed? The learning objectives, and these are given in the study guide and in the Mwele interface. And these learning outcomes usually will tell you by the end of this course, you, the learner, you'll be able to do A, B, C. So when you finish topic one, reflect and see. By the end of this topic, I was supposed to do A, B, and C. Can I do it? Are there any gaps? Should I repeat the topic once more and see whether I'm going to get the concepts that are being taught? You're taking responsibility of the curriculum and your learning. The learning outcomes. By the end of this course, you, the learner, you should be able to describe, be able to explain, you should be able to participate, you should be able to conduct this essay, you should be able to analyze all these learning outcomes are there in the curriculum, in the study guide, and in, on the Muwele interface. So take responsibility of the curriculum and your learning. Still with the learning, we're going to give you the connections. We've given you a list of topics. We've given you a list of learning outcomes. So you're going to make the connections that will help you gain those learning outcomes from the topics we have listed. So you're going to have PowerPoint lectures with voice recordings. You're going to have PowerPoint readings. They don't have voice recordings. But in the Mwele interface, you'll find that the lecture is available here. Click on it and read it. Sometimes they've got interactive questions. Still on the connections, we're going to give you demonstrations of techniques from other 
universities that are on YouTube in the public space. So look at these videos and learn. This was got from St. Louis University. It's a differential white blood cell count. And this was got from the CDC education site. It's a total leukocyte count. Still on the connections, because they're helping you learn the topics guided by intended learning outcomes. We've got open learning resources from other universities like University of Cornell, We've got an excellent clinical pathology site. We've got library resources that are linked into Moelle. You have got practical demonstrations and hospital attachments. So you're perfectly capable of guiding your learning through the resources that have been given to you. After you've learned, you're going to reflect. How do I know? Are there gaps? How do I close in on the gaps that I see? So you'll be given self-assessment study questions in the Muwele interface, and these are activities. After each topic, you'll answer the questions and get to know whether you've understood the concept. In addition, you're going to have peer-to-peer -peer discussions. These are highly encouraged. It can be in person with your friend or a group of friends going over the concepts that have been taught. There's a WhatsApp group where you can drop your question and your peers can give you an answer or the lecturer present can give you an answer. You're going to have specific and strategic discussion groups where you'll be given topics to discuss on what you've learned and submit assignments. You're going to present these assignments in class for peer review by your classmates and the lecturers. So all of this will help you reflect on what you've learned and find out whether you've grasped what you've learned. This is the class of 2023, I, giving a group presentation. Still in reflection, when you go for the wet bench practicals or the, pra of the hospital attachment, please reflect, reflect and ask yourself, is what was taught in class coming to life? Okay, thank you. You're going to go to the conditions given by the lecturers. The learning doesn't occur in your own free time, at your own pace, and during when you feel like or don't feel like it. So we give you conditions during which you're going to achieve the learning. The conditions would be attendance is compulsory. It will be recorded. Group work will, uh, will be... Um, monitored by the group leaders who will monitor your contribution and record your contribution on the group work. There may be roll calls in class or in practical demonstrations. There's a time frame to complete the topics. It is shown in Muele and in the study guide. We shall get to that soon. And the ETVTs have got deadlines with which you are supposed to submit them. So let's look at this. There are time frames with which to complete the topics, and these are indicated in Muele. So at the beginning of each topic, there's a date. Topic one is going to be conducted from August, this date to that date. Topic two will be conducted within week one and two from this date to that date. So these are the conditions that will help to guide your learning within a time frame. When you go to the topic, when you go to the study guide, in section three, there is the constructive alignment of the course. This is to also help to guide your learning. The list of topics are there, broken down into subtopics, and it tells you the intended learning outcomes that each of these topics and subtopics address. It tells you the week when they'll be covered, the um, 
time when they'll be covered and also the mode how they'll be covered whether they'll be covered online or in person and we've even gone ahead to tell you the assessment strategy that will be used for the particular topic will it be reflection questions self-reflection questions will it be an assignment will it be a wet bench practical will it be um online quiz end of semester exam end of semester practical exam so all of these <coughs> are the conditions by the lecturers given to guide your learning within a time frame when you go to the etvt section in Mwele, again you're going to see deadlines within which you're supposed to submit your assignments the deadlines are given up to the date and the time whereby you're supposed to submit your assignment if even a group assignment if need be if you don't submit within that time it passes and you won't be able to upload your assignment and your group you and your group members will lose marks lastly the conditions given by the lecturers appear in the summarized schedule of etvts and the deadlines this is in table six the last section of the study guide the etvt is here this is usually the assignment the number we describe the etvt and we give you the date when it's due either in class or to be submitted on Mawele. so you've chosen to learn you've gone through the curriculum looked at the materials you have reflected on your gaps you know what you know you know what you don't know the next step is contribute come to class and share what you've learned this is a collaborative learning you're not going to learn in isolation alone so when you come to class share the information well before you come to class you're first going to share the information you've learned with your group discussion members as you do the assignments then you come to class and present that work in class so that your other peers in class can benefit and you're going to find that you're going there's going to be a lot of self mentorship or mentorship from your fellow students they'll help you check your learning and even extend your learning up to the mastery level if you're able to explain to your peers the concept that has been taught and during this group sharing the lecturers and technologists are available to guide your learning and correct what has gone wrong correct the misinformation so during the contribution you can see a group here is discussing this was just outside my office they're discussing concepts and coming up with a group presentation that's going to be given in class and the group members came to class and gave their contribution so that's in short, is a flipped classroom approach that we're going to take in blended learning. So what are the students going to do in the flipped classroom? One, you'll be given education materials to read before you come to class, and that is preparatory research. You'll be watching the lecture online. You'll be review reviewing course materials and making synthesis you'll be reading physical text or digital text so all of that is online or within your discussion groups then you'll have activities which you'll be able to use as self-assessments to know whether you've learned hmm? Hmm? these activities will might include participating in an online discussion make a contribution participating in a group discussion synthesizing group presentations or participating in assignments and submitting these assignments online then you go to the in-person learning activities these are in class you're going to present your findings of the research individually or as a group and participate in these discussions 
So that's our method of blended learning that we are going to adopt this semester. Thank you for listening. <laughs>